Uh, Paul Sarasi uh, for Remember, uh, Director of Photography. One, one of the uh, uh, key things about the visual design that the Adam, the director, uh, wanted to do was to see the um, the story completely from the from the point of view of the main character's deceased wife. And so, as it was a POV kind of film, uh, everything was handheld. So uh, for me, it was a it was quite a challenge and, and very interesting to tell the entire story from off the shoulder. And and I, I was also operating the camera, so uh, we we picked. Uh, a camera that happily just was released at the time. Uh, it was uh, uh, Aeroflex's Amira, and it's a it's a camera meant for documentary filmmakers, and it was perfect for our film uh, because of the incredible picture quality that's possible with an Alexa type camera. But it was a very lightweight handheld uh, uh, way to go, um, and. Uh, Basically, the entire film, except for a few steady cam sequences uh, that uh, Sean Seely shot, who are, is an amazing operator, uh, but everything else was, was handheld. Uh, because uh, I was operating, I was very selfishly hoping to make the camera as small and as light as possible, and so the camera was pretty good, uh, but we chose the, the new Leica lenses, which are very small, uh, and they're, they're great in terms of size and weight, but also, um, they're, they're almost impossible to flare. Uh, they're, they're kind of like self-flagging, which was really crucial for the kind of shooting that we were up to, because the, the camera would be always in motion, moving around, looking at lights or whatever. So they, they, were, they were perfect for our, our purposes. We, the, the story is set, uh, it's kind of a road movie that happens all across uh, America, uh, but we shot uh, almost entirely in Sault Ste. Marie, uh, which played several different places, as well as Sault Ste. Marie itself. And also, being a border town, th there was a bit of uh, action taking place around the, the custom. We, we got our, our package from Sim uh, Video, and it was, it was fantastic. Uh, they were, uh, I, I think, one of the first places to get the Amira camera, which was perfect for our situation. So uh, it, it was a bit of an out-of-the-box uh, uh, thing for everybody, but it, it ended up being a great experience. Funnily enough, uh, Barrett Axford was my focus puller, and tonight he's being celebrated as the focus puller of mention of, of the year, and it's a, it's a wonderful uh, uh, coincidence that uh, he was my guy for, for this project. Hi, my name is Sarah Thomas Moffat, and I'm a director of photography, and I was the series director of photography for Klondike Trappers, a history channel show produced by Paperni Entertainment. Klondike Trappers was a series about the way of the life of the trapper. It was a factual show and we documented the way of the life of the trapper in the Yukon. Uh, these people have been doing it this way for centuries, as many generations of families continuing this way of life and it's about survival. Well, it was minus 40 to minus 50 or the thermometer only went to minus 50 <laughs> and it didn't go any lower but it was much colder. We traveled by skidoo everywhere uh, and dog sled. We lived with the trappers. We followed them on their trap lines. The challenges were obviously the temperature, uh, the environment, which was six hours of daylight and the rest was dark. Uh, so try to shoot in that ratio of hot sun, hot snow, darkness, you know, and, and the technology, no matter what technology we had, it would freeze. So it wasn't about the brand, it was about the temperature and managing the equipment as best we could. The way of life for them is, is a way that they've chosen, um, so you can't feel sorry for them, um, but they accept that they are part of the environment and their challenges are harvesting enough fur uh, throughout the winter so that they can sell it and make a living. And it's not a hunting type of practice, it's a very traditional ancient way of trapping. They run trap lines, they set small snares, and they wait. And if they're lucky enough, they trap usually small animals. Um, if they are lucky and the animals come to their traps, they're actually very respectful of them. I mean, I personally have some moral issues with um, many things in the world, but 
Uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to do the show when the show was offered to me because of that. But we learned that it was about the way of life, not about killing animals. And the show really showcases the way of life versus, you know, versus them trapping. So it's, it, it's a challenge for them to survive. They have to deal with the temperature, the conditions, food. They really see that they are part of the environment and they don't put themselves above it. And it's a choice that they make.